Praise the Lord. Amen. It's time to begin this morning's service. Let's all stand. Let's go before our God in prayer this morning. Thank him for his goodness and his love, his mercy that endures forever. Ham of God, we're thankful this morning, God, for your presence that's already here. God, you said where two or three are gathered in your name, that you are there in the midst of them, Lord. God, we appreciate, Lord, your faithfulness. And God, all your love and your concern for each one of us this morning. Continue, Jesus, as we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith this morning, God. As we look to you this morning, God, rain down, God, all that we need this morning from you to this morning, God. And God, as we look to heaven, God, we are sure this morning that you will give us, Lord, exactly what we're looking for this morning. We'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor that's due you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 If you remain standing, let's grab a hymnal. Turn to page 84 and sing that song, At the Cross, page 84. by your spirit to move in a mighty way this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Praise God. You may be seated this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to know that Jesus is still alive yes. in our hearts and our lives. Yes. Amen. Thankful for each one that's here uh, this morning. Thankful uh, for the move of God, for his love for each one of us uh, this morning. Amen. amen. We may not know, but there is a polar vortex going on here in Madison, <laughs> Wisconsin. I think it's about uh, minus what, brother? Minus, tw 22, minus, minus 22 degrees um, out there this morning. But praise the Lord, we're here in the world, in the house of God. It's kind of um, warm in here. Praise God. <laughs> praise God for heat. Amen. Man, they are working on the heater here. But um, 
Uh, we do have um, some space heaters in there, and the, and the heater's coming on, so it's about a 69, 70 degrees here. But praise God. Amen. Amen. It's good to be back in God's house this morning to worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. Amen. At this time, I'd like um, Brother Josh, could you pray, uh, stand and testify this morning? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, Pastor got me again. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he always does that. You know, he wants to stand and testify. Like, what do I say? The pastor says, I always say that. <laughs> But it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. And it's always had a blessing to have new beginnings in our lives. Yeah. And sometimes that's exactly what men and need, women need in their life. They just need a do-over. Yeah. Sometimes I think to myself, it's like a video game. Sometimes life is that way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes bad things happen, but we can start over. Yeah. And that's the way it is in the Lord Jesus Christ. As we look in our life, we can do things all over Amen. again. Amen. And that's one of the blessing things that I like about God is His love, His grace, and His mercy. Oh, yeah. Sometimes when things happen in life, he just comes over, he puts his arm around your Ooh, shoulder. That's why. Right. And he says, I love you. Yes. yes that's it's right. time to Amen. come home. Amen. Yes. Amen. We can have that do over in life, and we can have that grace and mercy. Amen. It is truly good to be a, a Christian this morning. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. I these brothers in my message this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's talking about uh, food this morning and the brothers <laughs> um, sharing about Christ. Um, <laughs> Praise God. Amen. God knows what we all have need of this morning. Yes. Yes. Amen. At this time, we're going to receive an offering this morning. That's Brother um, brother Ski. Come and help us this morning. Yes, this morning. You give as unto the Lord, and the Lord will richly bless you. And all Christians do pay tithe and cheerfully give an offering. Let us pray. Brother, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity to give. We ask you to bless the gift and the giving according to their giving. Amen. Thank you for your giving. The Lord will richly bless you. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Just want to share um, before we uh, preach. I want to thank those that are out there, um, in different states, different cities, um, giving to the work of God here in Madison, Wisconsin. It is appreciative, um, thankful that the Lord touches people's hearts to give to this ministry. Mm -hmm. Amen. At this time, we're going to be reading out of the book of St. John, St. John chapter 21. St. John chapter 21, verse 14. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. Bernardo, could you uh, cut that um, microphone off right there? Thanks, bro. Verse 14, St. John chapter 21. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. St. John chapter 21, verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said it unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. In other words, you know, you know God, you know everything. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hand, thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. And I'd like to draw your attention to verse 15, where it says, So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. And this morning, I'd like to preach on a thought, a message titled, 
do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Brother Josh, please, please pray the message and message this morning, please. I love you, Father. It's always exciting to be in your house. It's always exciting to hear your word. It's always exciting to be encouraged in you and in our life. God, we're just excited to be here this morning and looking forward to what you have for in store for each and every one of us. And God, just once again, we just ask that you would tailor it to our hearts because we know that you love each and every one of us that's here this morning. God, touch pastor and make preaching easy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do you love Jesus? This morning, woke up this morning, and that was laid upon my heart this morning. Seems like the Holy Ghost is saying, "Do you love? Do you love me? Do you love me?" We're definitely, li definitely living in the last days. These are the days that Jesus and the apostles were talking about. The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy, that perilous times shall come. That word perilous means difficult, dangerous. The same definition there about perilous in the strong concordance. It also gave the phrase about these times we live in as the idea of reducing strength. The age that we live in definitely reduces strength your spiritual strength to a slow drip. In our Bible reading here this morning, it says in John chapter 21 and verse 14 that this was the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was risen from the dead. Just like Jesus showed himself to the disciples back in the Bible days, he shows himself to each one of us here daily. He showed himself to us this morning by waking us up. Because, you know, we couldn't do that on our, in our own ability. He showed himself to us by allowing us oxygen to flow through our bodies so that we can breathe on our own. He showed himself real to us today by allowing heat in the house of God this morning. Or in our homes in these Arctic times that we have here in Wisconsin. He also shows himself by taking care of us. When the disciples landed on the shore after they were done fishing, Jesus had already built a fire of coals, laid fish thereon, and put some bread out there for them to eat. He already had set the table. John, St. John chapter 21 and verse 9. It says, as soon, as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid thereon and bread. Jesus may have set the table, but you know something? We have to bring something to the table also. The next phrase Jesus said there in John chapter 21 and verse 10. The next verse, it says, Jesus said unto them, bring of the fish which you have caught now. Wow, preacher. Preacher going, do you love Jesus? Is he the person you come to, come to just to see what you can get from him? Well, you know, see, Jesus just laid the table. He sat on the table. But he also told them to bring the fish that they probably caught just then. Some have the idea of coming to a church service to receive something tangible. Something that they can use just for that day. And that's the right idea, however. To, but Jesus wants you to take home something you can use and have for a lifetime. For a lifetime. He not only wants to feed you. He not only wants to clothe you. He not only wants to help you and steer you on the right road. He wants to give you something on the inside that will last more than a biscuit and a piece of fish. He wants a place or he wants to play a place in your heart to be put in your heart. 
He wants to be in your heart completely. He wants to press a peace deep down in your heart that will surpass all understanding. That peace will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. In St. John's Gospel here, Jesus not only shared with them to cast the net on the right side of the ship to catch a, a lot of fish, but he also served them. He also served them. In John chapter 21, verse 13, it says, Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. Christ serving individuals? The Bible says right here, Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that next verse said, and they didn't ask who it was. They already knew it was Jesus. They didn't say, the Bible says, they didn't say, who is this person? They already knew it was Jesus. With that said, if you're a Christian, you will serve. You'll do something about uh, being a servant of Almighty God. It wasn't until Peter was fed that Jesus talked to him about feeding others. John chapter 21, verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said, so when they had dined, when they sat there, ate the bread, ate the fish, and sat there sitting around the table of fellowship. Jesus turned to Simon. Hey, Peter. Thou son of Jonas. Lovest thou more than these? Yeah, Lord. Thou knowest that I love thee. He says, feed my lambs. If you're not being fed, don't attempt to feed others. Because what you give out will not be nutritious. It'll be junk food, messed up calories. Well, you know, I'm just, uh, uh, I'm, I'm being um, encouraged by someone else. If you ain't being encouraged by Jesus this morning, you ain't encouraged. Hello. He said, well, uh, the Bible says encourage yourself. Uh, and, and, uh, then was it, was, it, was it David that encouraged himself? Was it David? Encouraged himself in the Lord? He encouraged himself in the Lord. He didn't encourage himself in himself. You can't encourage people with your own food because it'd be messed up calories. If, however, I put down here, you are being fed, make sure you feed others because if you just keep getting fed and don't feed others, you'll become spiritually bloated and lazy. I got my food. Thanks, God. Um, are you going to feed others? Are you going to share the gospel with someone else? What are you eating on this morning? I'm talking about spiritually food, spiritual food. What are you eating on? Are you feasting on his word? More importantly, are you feeding others? Hello? Are we here this morning? Jesus asked Peter in John chapter 21, verse 15, Lovest thou more than than these love us not more than these to what does the word these refer to maybe jesus was pointing to the disciples you know a lot of people uh, probably say that oh he's just pointing to the disciples but oh <laughs> i'd like to go a little bit further than that peter told jesus in matthew chapter 26 verse 33 peter answered and said unto him thou though all men shall he, now peter told jesus this in matthew Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Maybe Jesus was pointing to the fish. Do you love me more than fishing, Peter? Because when all, that, when all the things happened to Jesus, Peter said, 
I go a fishing. Maybe it was referring to the boats. Do you love me more than your occupation or your work? Or is work your highest priority? Do you love me more than these disciples? More than these fish? More than the boats that's around here? Lovest thou me, son of Jonas? Uh, uh, Peter, son of Jonas? Do you love me? Do you love me, Peter? The word Jesus uses here is, a, is the agape love, the highest kind of love. I fed you. I've shown to you my grace, and I'm reaching out to you. But do you love me, Peter? Do you love me? The four, four words, four words in the Greek for love. Storge is the affection, is, is the affection one has toward family. The eros love is a sexual kind of love. Uh, filio or fielo is a love between friends. And agape love gives for the sake of just giving. Never expecting anything in return. Here Peter here is using the filio or the filio love. I won't say filio, but it's filio or something like that. The question is about love. Lovest thou me, Peter? Do you love me, Peter? The question is about the degree of Peter's love to Jesus. Why should Peter be expected to love Jesus more than all the others? He's just another disciple. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Remember Peter told Jesus, though all men shall be offended because of thee. Yet would I never be offended. Mm, okay. Then Peter denies Jesus three times. After Peter denies a Christ, he even knew. After he denied that he even knew Jesus, the Bible says that he went away and wept bitterly. I'm preaching on, do you love Jesus? Do you love him enough to tell others about him? Do you love him enough to take the time to worship him? Are we here this morning? Yes, you may worship him at home. But remember earlier when the disciples brought their fish to shore. And Jesus told them there in John chapter 21 and verse 10. Bring of the fish which you have now caught. I'm getting everything from Jesus. But Jesus said bring of the fish that you've caught. We have to do something, and we have to bring something. Both have to do with bringing something to Jesus. Jesus asked Peter three times if he loved him. Three times. How did Peter feel with this triple questioning? To a man like his, it must have been trying. The Bible says that Peter was grieved. That word grieved there means saddened. Jesus asked him three times. I want to ask you this morning. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Jesus in his love fest with Peter by saying, follow me. Follow me. The latter part of John, St. John chapter 21, verse 19 says, excuse me, and when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. Follow me. And Jesus is saying to each one of us this morning, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? He's saying it to the point that if you really love God, you'll be grieved. Jesus is asking you that, that three times. Do you love me? And then the last, if you do, follow me. Follow me. 
there is a illustration. I hope I get this right. Help me, Lord. Uh, I believe it was a true illustration about some Navy SEALs that went to rescue these hostages somewhere. And as they began to rescue the hostages, they came in and all the hostages hostages were uh, sitting on the floor. And as they were on the floor, they were all gathered together, huddled together, and, and the seals broke in and said, hey, uh, come on, we're Americans, follow, get us, let's, let's come, let's, let's get out of here. And as they told them, as they shared with them that they were Americans, and they were there to rescue them, they were afraid. In their minds, they didn't really believe that they were Americans, that they were coming to rescue them, so they huddled up even closer together and covered their eyes because they didn't want to see, uh, see them. So the seals, they would say, come on, let's go, let's go. We're here to rescue you. And they were still huddled up in, in fear. And so they were, they were among themselves, the seals, they were like, what are we going to do? They don't want to follow us. So one of them took off his helmet, set his weapon to the side. And he went uh, over, he took his jacket off and went over uh, to the, where they were uh, huddled up on the side. And he, he got next to one of them and, and got so close to touch them. And he put his arm around one of the hostages. And he didn't say anything. He just huddled there with them. And as all the other hostages saw him do this and they were looking at what he was doing, uh, he began to whisper in their ear, we're here to help. We're American. We're here to rescue you. So as they saw him, uh, all the hostages to see saw him get next to them, and they uh, uh, it seemed like he was uh, uh, joining them. He was with them. He felt it's almost like they were saying, "Man, he, he's he's getting right here down where we're at." And as he did that, he began to get up, put his stuff back on, and as he stood up, so, uh, one hostage stood up with him, and another one stood up, and they, they all stood up, and they began to follow them out of that room. What are you saying, preacher? I said, that's what Jesus does. He gets right down where we're at. He may say, hey, over here, I'm here to rescue you. Oh, no, God, I have to, it's too much. I, I don't know, it's got too much in my, in my life. But as he came from heaven, stripped down his deity and came down upon mankind got right where they were living at and said, hey, I'm here for you. Come on, follow me. I'm here to rescue you. And as Jesus got down in the trenches, when he got up, there are some that would get up with him. Not everybody will do it, but some will. They get up and begin to follow Jesus. Do you love Jesus this morning? That's the title of the message this morning. Do you love him enough to follow him? Do you love him enough to get up out of, uh, out of, uh, of fearing, not believing, and begin to follow him, begin to trust him as those hostages begin to trust their rescuers. Do you love them this morning? Easy message. Simple. But, but Jesus is still reaching out. Do you love me? Do you love me enough to put me first in your life? Do you love me enough I'm reaching out to you this morning. His hands are outstretched from heaven. Then he's saying, follow me. Follow me as he shared with his disciples and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will begin to make of you something that you may not even expect it to be in this life. In closing, I would have never thought that I would become a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Never thought I'd be standing behind a pulpit in sub-zero degree weather in Madison, Wisconsin, preaching the gospel. I shared with my wife this morning, you know, I said, hey, I said, you know, we, we, have, uh, we have to go get to the church. No doubt it may be cold outside, but you know something? There is no excuse. There is no excuse for us to come to the church as far as me is concerned, me is concerned. No excuse for me to come to the church, turn on these lights, turn on the computer in the back, turn on this phone in the front and begin to broadcast this out to those that are listening this morning. Thankful for those that have come out this morning. Thankful for those that are here. No excuse. <laughs> are you talking to me, preaching? No. Share with some folks this morning, hey, I understand. You do what you got to do. But Jesus is saying, follow me. Follow me. With that, we're going to close this service in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful this morning. With your every head bowed and every eye closed in reverence to the Lord. Thank you this morning, God, for your word. For all that you're doing in our hearts and our lives. Help everyone here, Lord. Bernardo. Help everyone here, Jesus. And everyone that's listening to this message this morning. Help them, God, to examine themselves. To examine themselves, Lord, knowing that as you shared with Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And as Christ impressed that upon our hearts this morning, when I woke up this morning, he asked me the same question, which I'm relaying it to you this morning. Do you love him this morning? Do you love him the way that he loves you? Hallelujah. Help us all, Lord, this morning. Help us to love you the way that you love me. Let's all find a place to pray this morning. Pray at your seat. Pray at the altar. Wherever the Lord lays upon your heart, spend a season a prayer with him this morning. God bless you.
Pray as long as you like. When you finish praying, you may consider yourself dismissed. God bless you is our prayer this morning. Brother Josh, could you please close the prayer this morning? Our loving Father, we thank you for your message of love this morning. God, we thank you for the opportunity to not be a hostage in our life, but we can have that grace and that knowledge and that mercy through the Lord Jesus Christ through salvation. God, we thank you for the, the word that was accomplished in our life this morning. And God, we thank you for the opportunity to draw closer to you each and every day in our lives. We just ask you to watch over us. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you is our prayer this morning. Um, due to the frigidness of tonight's weather, um, we are scheduled to have a service tonight, but we We'll, we may have a service tonight, I'm pretty sure, um, Lord willing. But um, we want to ask people to use their own judgment while coming out in 40 degree, <laughs> minus 40 degree uh, temperatures, 35, 40 degrees. So um, use your own judgment. Um, that's what I want to share. God bless you. We'll see you soon.